Hello. Um, I don't really feel like making this video, but it's overdue, and, um, I'm tired of having the thoughts in my head about it, so I'm just gonna make it. Might talk a little slow, because I'm kind of tired, and... Not in a very good mental space. Um... Well, the first thing I guess you should know is that, and this is good, got two hands. Um, the infection, luckily, was very superficial. So, because my uh, wounds were healed, since it happened so long after surgery, it didn't penetrate down into my nerves. That's my hypothesis. The doctors didn't tell me that, but. The way I see it, is, I, the way I see it is, I'm very lucky that um, yeah, the infection happened so long after surgery. That's how I see it. Um, so, yeah. Um, as for pumpkin, little pumpkin, little baby pumpkin, he's doing great. I've gotten pictures from the person who has them. He's he's cuddled up on the couch with them, he's on their lap, he's loving it, he's in a three-story house, he's able to climb all up and bolt around, he loves, he loves it, he really, it's cat heaven over there, and he, so, Pumpkin is doing so good, um, and so, that's good, you know, that's really good. I do kind of miss him sometimes, because he's just so cuddly and cute, but, uh, it is, I, I, I'm not, I'm not one to have a pet. It's not for me. <sighs> okay, so two months detransitioned. Damn, I should have got some water before those. It's okay. Two months. The biggest change, well, no, I wouldn't say the biggest change, but the one that bothers me the most, well, I don't even know if it's the one that bothers me the most. Forget everything I just said. One of the changes <laughs> is my oily skin and hair. Um, it's just insane how different my body is now. Um, so that does mean that my testosterone is coming back, and that's good. Um, I was going to get my testosterone levels checked for this video, which is why it was so overdue. However, I am lazy, and I had a lot going on, <laughs> so I didn't I didn't get my levels checked. But I don't really know if I need to. I can tell. I mean, my skin's oily, my hair's oily, and my face is breaking out. Hair is growing faster, and my sex drive is completely different from when I was on estrogen total night and day, and even my sexuality is different, and I think that's very interesting because we think of sexuality in general as very set in stone. Um, that's not been my experience in life, although, to be fair, my experiences in life have been overall drastically different than everyone else's anyway, so why not sexuality as well? Um, I found that I found that my sexuality completely changes um, when I'm on estrogen compared to testosterone, so not going to go into it too much, but not only just the sex drive, but the sexuality as well. It's just night and day on both of them. Um, so kind of interesting. It's given me, I guess you could say, some perspective into what it would be like, I guess, for me to be without testosterone and on estrogen. It, it, I don't know. It's just very interesting. Um, hard to say what it actually means, if anything. Hard to say. Um, I gotta say, I like testosterone more, but it's annoying. Sex drive is annoying. Um, and I'm, I honestly can say I wish I didn't have to deal with that. Um, <clears throat> one interesting thing is that my food cravings are different. 
Um, now, I think personally, I, I attribute this to the fact that my autoimmune condition, which we'll get into in a bit, has gotten a lot better in many respects, and we'll get into that in a second. But I attribute the, the, the craving changes to that because I think my body's just working better, and so I'm able to basically control my appetite. Before transitioning, I was 50 kilograms. Very lean, very muscly, very lean. Now I am 60 kilograms with a substantially less muscle. So it's just all fat. Um, I had, Before transition, I was in the best shape of my life. Now I am in the worst shape of my life. But I'm learning that I can control my food cravings more. I can control what food I eat more. Um, and again, I think that's less to do with the, the hormonal change and more to do with the fact that my body isn't constantly stressed out by the autoimmune condition. So with that said, let's get into the autoimmune condition. Okay. Oh, don't turn on. Hold on. No, 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 no. Peter was about to kick on. All right. It's so loud. When this is a, they installed a new heater. It's like 50 times louder than it was. So it's insanely loud. It would you wouldn't be able to hear me. Okay. So now it totally threw me off. Great. Autoimmune condition. So my eye has cleared up almost entirely. It's insane. I mean, my eye was so blurry. It was painful. It was uh, just, it was just, it was agonizing, honestly. Um, and it's basically totally cleared up. When I would wake up in the morning, I would feel groggy. I would feel achy. I would, my eye would be totally blurry when I would wake up for the first few hours, especially. And sometimes the whole day, but gen generally, especially the first few hours. And what I've noticed now is when I wake up, Eyes are working perfectly. Body is ready to go. I could literally leap. Sometimes I do. I just jump out of bed. And I could I could jump out of bed right into, you know, starting to do push-ups or something, you know. I mean, my body just works so much better. Um, and uh, other nerve issues I was dealing with, like in my leg and stuff, those are basically fully cleared up. They seem, my body just seems to be healing. In, in almost every single capacity, digestion-wise, eye issue-wise, nerve issue-wise, skin's a little weird because like I'm getting breakouts and stuff. But also like my uh, sort of like I guess you could call it eczema has gotten worse, which I guess makes sense. The thing about estrogen, when I was on estrogen, I, I didn't get like a single breakout for two years, even if I didn't wash my face <laughs> like ever. Um, it was pretty incredible, honestly. The effects that exogenous estrogen at the dose I was taking have on your skin it makes it like super super soft and you just never get a blemish and the eczema on my arms wasn't as bad um, or even wasn't even really there sometimes I, I forgot about it actually I don't care though I don't care about like the breakouts I don't care about the, the roughness of my skin how oily it is I don't care um, because I do not care how I look. Um, so I actually, oddly, oddly, despite the fact that I absolutely look worse than I did, um, I actually feel better about myself. That's interesting, isn't it? So, huh. and I guess, I guess that's just, well, that's, that's for another video, but basically the point I'm getting at is the more we cling to something, the more attached we are to something, and this is a Buddhist sort of ideal, but a precept or whatever, but the more attached you are, the more you will suffer in trying to control something. Um, so you're attached to your appearance. If your appearance isn't going well, you're going to suffer. Um, as soon as you detach yourself from it and just whatever happens, happens, you no longer will suffer. That's, that's applicable to everything in life. It's not always easy to apply, but it is applicable. Um, 
sometimes that application can take some real mental work or time. Time is a big one, I think. Um, and then again, just to overall feeling sort of like cleaner, physically better, just like, oh, and speaking of cleaning, so last time you saw me, what the heck, you weren't supposed to see that. <laughs> It's a cookie. It's a cookie thing. I ate a bunch of cookies. Okay, but uh, look, I cleaned all this out. See, it had a bunch of garbage in it and stuff um, that I just stuff. You know, stuff I had kept for a while and I just wasn't using, and just stuff that had no real value to anyone other than me. So I just, I just chucked it all. Mostly, there's a couple things over there that I'm gonna still sell, like on eBay and stuff. And. Uh, and then back here, I have my bins of clothes. I'm going to donate all these clothes. I'm going to just drop them off at a place that donates them to people very soon. So I won't have bins of clothes behind me anymore, hopefully. That's the idea. And um, and I feel good about it. And then I have some stuff on my desk back here um, that I'm going to sell. Um, so I'm going to basically... I'm going to... Hopefully, by the time I... Well, I, I don't know if I'll be moving. I probably will be moving soon, but um, I don't know. It depends on how things go. I want to move. I think it's time. But hopefully by the time I move, I will have very, very, very little physically, as little as I can. And, you know, the more I clean, the better I feel. The, the, the simpler everything is, the quieter the world is. The less I have, the less attached I am to physical material things. The, the simpler things get. The less I want. The less I have, the less I want. Um, I can't really tell you, unless you've experienced it yourself, how nice it is to have less and less and less and less and then effectively very little. And then just waking up one day on a on a cold sort of day, maybe having a uh, a hot matcha tea to warm you up, and then doing some exercises and meditating and, and taking a shower. And so far, you've not said a single word all day. And then looking outside, maybe taking a walk, not a single word. It's nice. It just clears everything up. Talk about true perspective. True perspective puts everything into perspective. And that there's nothing to put into perspective. You just sort of are. It's nice. So... I want to say this. Yeah, I mean, so my breast development has decreased, I don't know, maybe 30%, which is a lot. It's only been two months, um, but they're still there. Um, but yeah, it's decreased like 30%, I would say. So going down. But the thing is, I'm also fatter than I've ever been. I bet if I like really like did like a fast or something, like a long-term fast, which I'm actually thinking about doing, um, and lost like a bunch of weight, I bet they would rapidly go down. Um, I'm not going to do that soon, but you know, sometime in the near future, I might, um, or my or I might not. Uh, I don't, I don't personally like fasts the way that other people do them. The only reason I would do it is because um, I was thinking of trying just one more time. I've tried it four times in my life, and it never worked. Why would I do it again? I'll give it one more shot. Um, a specific diet. And if you fast right before you head into this diet, it, it works really well. It's a, it's a, I don't want to, I don't want to say what it is because...
Should I say this? I think people are really stupid when it comes to diets. Um, they think they know more than they do. Just take it from me, someone who's read uh, probably close to 600 plus medical studies throughout the years, uh, the past eight or nine years on, uh, on diet and food. Um, take it from me, I know nothing about diet. Okay? I've watched tons of YouTube videos on diet. I've watched so many doctors talk about all the thousands of medical studies they've read about diets. I've watched nutritionists. I've watched... I've, I've read my own medical studies. And I can safely say that I have no idea what what uh, works with diet. So um, I would say if, you, if it's working for you and your blood markers are fine, great. Um, otherwise try and fix it. <laughs> it's that simple. Um, don't, don't, don't think you found the answer is all I'm saying. Cause you haven't, cause I haven't. And perhaps there is no answer. Perhaps that's the thing. That's why we can't figure it out. Perhaps, well, I mean, I don't know. This isn't the video for this, but the idea of eating, the idea of gaining energy and using energy, this is a, this is a damaging process. This hurts your body to do. Um, and so perhaps there's no such thing as healthy eating. Eating in, in any way is hurtful. How hurtful it is, you get to decide. That's really all it is. Um, I did write down just a weird thought. Um, and the thought is, I wish I never transitioned. And, you know, what I mean by that is, before I transitioned, I was in the best shape of my life. I could do 15 pull-ups in a set. 14, 15 pull-ups on a good day. 11 to 13 on a bad day. I could do push-ups. I could do handstands. I could... Um, I could just, I could, I could jump on things. I could run around. My body was good. It was useful. It was powerful. It was a good body. And now I, I can't do any of that. I feel like I'm 60, you know? I don't feel energetic. I don't feel like I can do a ton of stuff. I do feel better than when I was transitioning now, but not before. Before, my body worked really well, and I ruined that. Um, and I gained a bunch of weight and I lost all the muscle. So, um, now compared to before I transitioned, it, it's like two different bodies. So when I say I wish I didn't transition, I mean all of the stuff that you might imagine I mean, but, but more so I think in this moment when I wrote this down, I think I was thinking, I wish I had that utility and that just competency where I could just jump and, and do pull-ups and run around and lift things up and push myself like to my limit and not hurt myself. Now if I push myself to my limit, I'm gonna snap something, something's gonna break. I can't really do many uh, exercises because this arm is not fully healed. It's extremely sore still. Well, not extremely, but it's a little sore here. Uh, I can't fully do what I used to, and maybe I will never be able to, because of this stupid fucking surgery, which I regret. Um, so, um, well, Honestly, I don't have much more to say, but just, I'm just thinking.
if I were to say certain things... People would get upset, and uh, they would, I, I could get in trouble actually, legal trouble and stuff, so I can't say certain things. Meditating, actual meditation, focused meditation takes a lot of energy and willpower that I don't always have. Um, and so I don't do it as much as I know I probably should. And life for me is very dangerous right now. Um, I am on the edge of a cliff. Actually, I'm on the edge of several cliffs. Cliff, cliffs. Um, maybe just on a very tall, very very tall pillar in the middle of the ocean, that's what I'm on. And depending on which way I fall off, <laughs> that's that's the direction my life will take. Um, and I don't know what it's going to be. Um, I think most likely it will be one of solitude for the most part. I think that's the best possible path, but I need to meditate in order to achieve that. Um, but it might not be in my control. Because... Uh, my brain isn't working, well, no, my brain's working perfectly for itself, <laughs> but I don't know what lies ahead for my brain, um, that's why I say I'm on the, this pillar. I'm not going to assume I know how my brain is going to, you know, continue working. But it's not a, well, it's not a very good brain, uh, sometimes to me. And Where is me? I don't know what's going to happen with my life. I, I, I can genuinely say I, I do not know what's going to happen. Um, what I do know is whatever happens, I will be okay. whatever that means. But my life can't go <laughs> in a normal direction. It just can't. Uh, a normal direction being societally normal. Um, and that does not bother me, because I wouldn't even want it to. But what? Well, 
does anything bother me about that. What bothers me is that I don't know where it'll end up. Um, where I'll end up. I wish I had more to say on it. I will just say the current thought that is the most prominent for me is that my empathy, of which I have a lot, is my greatest weakness. It's the thing that's holding me back the most. If you're empathetic, you are you are being exploited. Um, it's not you will be. You are being currently, right now, right now, in this video, in society, in your job, in your family, in your friends, relationships, by your pets. If you have empathy, you are being exploited. Your life is not your life. It is someone else's. Not that that matters very much. Right? Your life being your life isn't very important, but... Um, but the ego would take issue with that if it, if it were to realize that. Um, which it might not, usually. But then once it does, it could be explosive. Um, and so I think the safest thing, safe, not that safety matters, but the safest thing would be to crush the ego, destroy the ego, and uh, simultaneously Let go of the empathy. Let go of the ego. Let go of the empathy. Now what are you left with? That's what I want to figure out. And I want to do it by myself. Um, I've been sort of fascinated with Buddhist ideas because they're very, very interesting. And so the mistake I've been making, perhaps, is that because their ideas are so interesting and because I've come to those same ideas on my own accord, I think, okay, maybe there's more interesting ideas there. But why would I do that? Why would I come to that conclusion? It could be that the only interesting ideas are the one I are, ones I already relate to. Or it could be that they have other interesting ideas and I should study their, their teachings, but it doesn't matter. What brought me to Buddhism is myself, my own thoughts, and then lining up with their thoughts. Why would I value their thoughts over mine? Perhaps I'm the one who, who is capable of doing everything that they already did. <laughs> in their teachings. So, uh, yeah, I'm not, I, I thought about 
even learning like Pali and doing all this stuff and studying and just meditating and really becoming like a Buddhist monk. Um, but I want to avoid that. And instead I want to... Um, become a uh, monk of my own type. I don't need any teaching, I know that. I just need thought and lack of thought. <laughs> just awareness, awareness and thought, that's all I need. You know, this is a long video, but it baffles it baffles me um, how society has gone on this long and in such a way. Because uh, if everyone were like me, it wouldn't have it wouldn't have gotten to this point. So you might say, well, it's a good thing not everyone's like you. I'm not so sure it is a good thing. Uh, That's what I used to say. I used to say, oh, well, it's, a, it's a good thing not everyone's like me. It's a good thing I'm, I'm very different from most people. Um, I'm not so sure, no. These are too many thoughts. I'm having too many thoughts that are not worth exploring right now. So I think I'll end the video. Um, but to sum it all up, if you made it through all that detransition, it's going it's going good. Um, a little annoying at times, but overall much better than transitioning was physically. Mentally, mentally, mentally. I guess I didn't even go into the mental aspect, did I? This is all physical. Hmm, I didn't think about that. Huh. Mentally, I'm much clearer. I understand everything much more clearly, because um, I don't have all the issues to think about. I don't have all the drugs to take and all of the things I was attached to, to worry about, like my appearance and my identity. Mentally. I guess I didn't go into mentally because mentally I, I, I didn't get to choose my brain, you know. I guess I didn't get to choose any other part of my body either, but... My brain is what's making this video, it's what's making all of this. So how can I comment on it? <laughs> doesn't doesn't make sense. Mentally, it is what it is. Is it better? Is it worse? It's, it's maybe slightly different. That's all I can really say. It's what it should have been. At least for right now. It might change in the future. But it's what it was supposed to be at this point in time. As opposed to if I had been on estrogen, it would, it would not be what it was supposed to be. I see that now. It's supposed to be. Uh, 
um, yeah. I'm sort of saying nonsense now, but actually I don't think I am. Video is now too long for anyone to watch. <laughs> Great, good job. Still trying to, I'm still trying to work out like what I meant by that. Because um, obviously my brain's not supposed to be anything, so I can't have said what I said, but. interesting um I guess what I meant by that is I'm returning to how I used to be and I like it I like it a lot more this is how I'm supposed to be. I'm not on any medications. Um, but I guess I'll say I, I should end the video, but. Just to sort of wrap it up. What I mean by when I say my brain is how it was supposed to be, I don't mean that that's good. <laughs> um, I just mean that as true. Sort of like, sort of like saying, uh, you know, someone having a psychotic break or something when they're like 25 or something. You know, their brain, that's how their brain was supposed to be. That, that was their destiny in terms of their mental development. Um, it's not a good thing. Or maybe it is. I don't know. That's uh, that's another thing. Good and evil, bad. These are thoughts I already talked about a little, and it's hard. I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to. Normally, we would want to do things that are good, right? And we would want to avoid things that are bad. So when you can't really when when those when those sort of categories start to break down. Um, Life becomes a little more dangerous, actually. But also, um, it doesn't matter that they do. Because dangerous is bad, and if you can't tell that, then...
then it's not. Because it's not bad. It's just a judgment. <laughs> it's kind of funny, you know. <laughs> I don't know. This is silly. 40 minutes. But I'll end it on this. I've spent... I spent my whole life in school, as most of us do. Went into school all throughout childhood and all the way until I was 20, 21, graduated college, 22, maybe. Graduated college. And I was teaching myself things as well. All because I thought that's what I needed. Because that's what society indoctrinated me into. That's what my parents indoctrinated me into. That's what all my friends indoctrinated me into. That's what society indoctrinated me into. And it was all lies. <laughs> and it was all wrong. And now I've spent the past couple years sort of floating around trying to shake off all of these things I learned throughout my life trying to trying to like like little globs of goo trying to like get it off of me and now I see all the globs a little more clearly and so now I can sort of just sort of brush them off um and so now I'm unlearning. So I spent all my life learning, and now I have to spend all my life unlearning. Because everything I was taught was wrong. <laughs> Darn, that's unfortunate. What a waste, huh? Why do we do this? Why do we take a perfect creature and crush it into a mold of the society? and then call ourselves parents.
I have nothing more to say at the moment. Take care.